Hello, hello. Good evening. We are uh, busting at the seams here tonight. That's a good thing. So we have been talking about uh, several uh, in several of our Bible studies about the immutable fundamental tenets of Christianity. Things that uh, cannot be messed around with. And I know we've went over this before, but how many of you know it's good to learn it again? Yeah. Uh, maybe for the first time or maybe for the hundredth time. Yes, amen. So we're going to be discussing over the next, God only knows how many weeks, uh, the fundamental tenets of Christianity. These again are things that cannot be changed. If they change the, any of these things, they're, uh, they're out in left field. Now, the other thing is that I want you to understand that we are not handing out doctorate theological seminary degrees after this, so we're not planning on digging real, real deep, okay? Um, we may dig real, real deep in further studies as we go along, but the goal here is to get a basic understanding so that you and I understand enough of it to understand it, you and I understand enough of it that we can pass it along. Amen. Amen. Okay? And we know enough of it, we're comfortable with it enough that, that if we hear something different, then we know that's not right. Everybody understand that? Yes. Okay, so you take notes as you deem necessary, and uh, we will just move along at a snail's pace here. All right, number one. Under God the Father, God is infinite. Infinite. which is the exact opposite of finite. Okay, finite is something that we can grasp a hold of and understand. Infinite is beyond the capable means of us understanding. Uh, infinite means that uh, there is no beginning, there is no end. It means that God can operate outside of the parameters of logic and science. Um, when you tell somebody God is the creator of all things, the critic <clears throat> likes to start off and say, well, who created God? Well, the problem with that is if God is created, he is not God. He cannot be God. Okay, so we go to Revelation chapter 1, verse 8. And when you find it, say, got it, and then read it out loud. Revelation, or the book of the Apocalypse, the book of the Apocalypse. Revelation 1, verse 8. Got it. Okay. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Okay. Who was, who is, and who is to come. Now, you gotta understand that this is that this cannot be understood. <laughs> you cannot understand infinity. You can understand eternity. I began and I'm going to live eternally. But we cannot understand infinity because nothing that we see in this world is infinite. We see buildings go up. We see them become dilapidated. We see them torn down. We buy a new car, and the next thing you know, we're repairing it. It is becoming dilapidated. It is breaking down. Infinite is never began, never ends, has no external source for energy. It says impossible to measure or calculate. Impossible to measure or calculate. That's that's a great uh, definition. Okay, so 
See if I can already just kind of overload your mind. God is out of time, outside of time. God is inside of time at the same time. God was out of time, and then in the beginning, God came into time and created time, and then will exist when time no longer exists. <coughs> Questions? Comments? Next one. God is omnipotent, which is spelled like omnipotent. 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 Which means God is what? All powerful. And so I'm going to really mess up your mind with this one. Spell that omnipotent. Omni, O M N I, potent, potent, P O T E N T, omnipotent, omnipotent. And what did you say that means? God is all. God is all powerful. It should, it should say it. Oh, yes, never mind. Sorry. Okay, so somebody in the Old Testament turned to the book of Job. Chapter 42. And if you want to know where Job is, it's right around Psalms. Job 42 and verse 2. Got it. Read it. I know that you can do all things and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. Okay? God can do everything. God can do anything. Except God can't do everything. Can't lie. He cannot lie. He cannot sin. Mm -hmm. He cannot sin. He cannot fail. So, in other words, here's the thing that you and I need to understand: God is omnipotent, can do anything as long as it does not mess with His godness. Mm -hmm. Okay, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, if we say God is omnipotent, He can do anything and everything. But, the catch to that is, he can't do anything that messes with his godness. He cannot die. He can't get sick. Okay? Et cetera, et cetera. He can't injure himself. He can't fall. Okay? That makes sense? You're quiet. We're writing. <laughs> you don't have to write everything. You know, uh, you know, again, this is just, again, so I'm trying to give you a basic understanding of the fundamentals so that, again, if, you know, if you get into a conversation, you can talk about these things and feel comfortable. Okay? And, again, just as uh, a reminder, if you don't know the answer, don't fake it. If you don't know the answer and you fake it, you're going to get yourself in trouble. Now, uh, next one. God is omnipresent. O M. Omni. N I. And present. P R E S E N T. Thank you. You're welcome. Which means God is everywhere at all times. Does omni mean all? Omni means all. Yes. Or is the so, omni, omni chocolate? No. <laughs> so, Old Testament. Somebody find Jeremiah 23, verse 23 through 24. Jeremiah 
Here, buddy. I got it. Okay, Cheryl. Cheryl, talk to me. Am I only a God nearby, declares the Lord, and not a God far away? Who can hide in secret places so that I cannot see them, declares the Lord? Do not I fill heaven and earth, declares the Lord. Okay. So God fills the heavens, God fills the earth. Now, let's talk about this for just a minute. There is a dip. now listen to me, there is a difference between the omnipresent presence of God and the manifested presence of God. Would you like an example of that? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm giving you an example. I'll give you a couple of examples. Okay, God is everywhere. But wherever the ark was, that's where God's manifested presence was. But God's presence could not be limited to the ark of the covenant. <clears throat> but wherever the ark was, God's presence was manifested. There is also scriptures where the priests went in to into the Holy of Holies, and the manifestation of God's presence was so powerful that they could not stand in the Holy of Holies, and they had to get out of there. And the best one is Acts chapter 2. God's power and presence manifested in a singular place. He was still everywhere at all times, but he manifested in a singular place. And so when, when you hear me or, or somebody else say God's presence is here, we're not talking about in the omnipresent um, Fashion. We're talking about God is manifesting His singular presence in this place. And yes. you're saying He can also have His singular presence in another place at the same Absolutely. time. Absolutely. Gotcha. Absolutely. And here's the thing God can manifest singularly in people's lives in a church service. There's two or three over here. And one over here, and one back there. And everybody else is just staring at the wall. <laughs> and God's presence is manifesting in a singular place. I've seen it happen. I've had it happen. Okay? Questions, comments? Okay? Last one. Um, the, um, the, well, next one, sorry. God is omniscient. O-M-N-I-S-C-I-E-N-T. O-M-N-I-S-C-I-E-N-T. Omniscient. Thank you, Dan. Which means God is all-knowing. Oh, Somebody get Psalms 147, verse 5. Got it. That's fast. Read it. Is this a race? Praise our Lord in abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. It's infinite, beyond measure. Okay, what was that Psalm like? Psalm 147, verse 5. I'm going to quit trying to look because I can't keep up with that and this and that. That's all right. We can look it up later. Yeah. That's why I asked yeah. what it was. Yeah. yeah. I'm not racing. Okay. We know very little. Some of us more little than others. <laughs> <laughs> Raw. Okay. But God knows. All things. So omni means all, so S C I E N T. That's me. It's a different word. It's language. like, um, I just lost the word. I had it there. Um, it's, uh, it's almost like science, S C I E N T. Science, uh, it's, um, what's the word I'm looking for? That they have an understanding. That, that, uh, they have um, 
I'll come. I'll come back to that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I know what yeah. on my phone to look it up, but I. Um, anyway. Okay. I'll I'll put it on Slack later. All right. So the last one I believe when we're talking about God the Father is God is perfect mm -hmm. in everything he says and in everything he does. Perfect. That's P E R. <laughs> Come on, Frank. I can't. Go ahead. P E R F E C T. F E C T. Perfecta Mundo. I thought you were going to say perfect is D A N. <laughs> oh! oh. 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 You read it. No. Nash is not on the screen. All right, so we've got four verses. <laughs> Psalms chapter 18, verse 30. What did, I'm sorry. Pardon me? What did you just say? Psalms 18, verse 30. Oh, 30. 30. Psalms 18, 13. Christy's got it. What is it? It's 18, 13. So, okay, hold on. Listen. Psalms chapter 18, verse 3 0. Okay. 13. Not 13, 13. 30. All right, Christy, read it for me, please. This God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord proves true. He is a shield for all those who take refuge in him. Okay. That's awesome. Psalms chapter 19, verse 7. <clears throat> Got it? I think. Read it. <laughs> the law of the Lord is perfect, re reviving the soul. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one, too. Oh, okay. sorry. That's the, the testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. Deuteronomy 32, verse 4. Deuteronomy 32, verse 4. Deuteronomy 32, verse 4. Let's, uh, Eric is going to read here in a minute, but listen. Okay, you don't have to spell Deuteronomy. I short. D E U T. Deut. Deut. Deut stands for Deuteronomy. Okay? Psalms. Psalms. P S. Proverbs. P R. Okay, shorten it up. All right, uh, Erica. <laughs> uh, the Rock, his work is perfect, for all his ways are justice. A God of faithfulness and without iniquity, just and upright is he. Okay. All right. I had four, but it's actually three because the fourth one is a repeat. Uh, his way is perfect. The law is perfect. His work is perfect. Everything he says, everything he does, and everything he does not say, and everything he does not do is perfect. Well, how come God's not doing anything for me? Because his ways are perfect. Well, how come he's doing something for somebody else? Because his ways are perfect. How come God's speaking to them? Because his sayings are perfect. Well, how come he's, uh, because his, he is perfect in all of his ways. Did we get all that? Yeah. Right. What was the last one? I got Deuteronomy 32 4. Is there another one? No. No. Oh, no. Uh, fourth one, I, I didn't notice, but it's just a repeat. Okay. Um, so, yes. Let's 
talk about Jesus. All right. Jesus is God. Capital G. Capital G. Tiny line. In the flesh. Jesus is God in the flesh. God in the flesh. Jesus is God in the flesh. All right, so I'm going to give you I'm going to give you scriptures, and then we're going to break this down. Break it down now. Okay, Gospel of John, chapter one, verses one through three. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. The same in the beginning was God. God was God. It's <laughs> a good guess. Shall I, shall I complete it? <laughs> in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. And without him was not anything made that was made. John, same chapter, chapter 1, verse 14. Somebody get it? And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory and the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. All right. So the, in the beginning was Word, the Word was with God, the Word was with God, the Word was made flesh. First Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. First Timothy. Chapter 3, Great. chapter 3, verse 16. Great indeed, we confess, is the mystery of godliness. He was manifested in the flesh, vindicated by the Spirit, seen by angels, proclaimed among the nations, believed on in the world, taken up in glory. Okay. Let me read King James, just the first couple of lines here. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. Let me break that down for you. And without debate, without discussion, without argument, great is the mystery of godliness. That God was, number one, manifest in the flesh. All right. So let's break it down. Ready? Uh -huh. Susie's got this look like. Huh? I'm, I'm Give just it to me. so confused right now. <laughs> okay. That's all right. So, and we're gonna we're gonna get into the Trinity later. Okay. But I'll, I, I'm gonna dive into the Trinity for just a second. The Trinity is the explanation. Of the infinity of God to manifest and exist. Don't write all this down because you're never going to get it. To, to manifest and exist in three distinct persons. Mm -hmm. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. All three, one God. Don't try to understand it. Just like the apple, remember? Well, there's a lot of analogies. Pies, mm -hmm. apples, mm. human beings. Apple pies. Apple pies. <laughs> when you say God the Son, you mean Jesus. And God the Son is Jesus. So when Jesus was born, he was born fully God and fully man. Is that the second one? Um, no. This is just an experience. 
No. No. <laughs> Jesus was born when Jesus was born. We're still on the first one. He was born fully God and fully man. I'm not sure I understand. I know. <laughs> and neither do they. Neither do they, Terry. I don't want to get to Terry. Sorry. He is God. He's in our time. He's everything. Yes. Okay. God was manifested in the flesh. Jesus the Christ. Born, okay, fully God, fully man. Two complete, full, distinct natures in one being. The only time it's ever happened, the only time it ever will happen. Okay. Now, we're not talking about uh, a mutant half breed of God and man. We're not talking about a synergistic uh, mutation of God fusing with man. God and man, two distinct, living in one shell. And you see this manifested many occasions where Jesus operates as God when he's walking on the face of the earth. And other times when he's manifesting as flesh. Okay? That's you! Oh, I'm so mad. <laughs> they were fighting. All right? Now, I know there's a billion and one questions, comments. We're not going to dig in too deep here. So, yes, sir, Brother Mike. So would that be like in uh, John somewhere where he's raising Lazarus from the dead? It yes. Says, it says he weeped because he loved them and then. That's okay. So raising G, uh, Lazarus from the dead where he wept, but in but in another place he healed a lame person and said, uh, Your sins are forgiven. Mm -hmm. And they flipped out and said, Woo! Because only God can forgive sins. And he said, I'm paraphrasing. He said, Yeah, I know. I'm, that, that's why I got yep. it. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, what you see is what you get. All right. Now, this is known as, don't write this down, unless you want to look it up, the hypostatic union. Okay, this is, again, we're dealing with, again, listen, here's the thing. We're dealing with finite minds and finite understanding trying to comprehend and explain <laughs> something that's infinite. We're not going to ever get there until we get over there. Mm -hmm. We just try to do our best to understand and say, I have an understanding of what it is. I have no idea how it is. So when all this goes down, do you think it'll just be inputted into our minds or he'll have like... Classes and lectures. <laughs> I hope it's a flash drive that he just plugged it in. Plug it in. I, uh, my own, my own personal opinion, it's an instant download. Also, yeah. we just won't even care. Yeah. yeah. All right, next one. Jesus was born in the flesh by the Virgin Mary. Yes. Yeah, I was pretty. That's right. Somebody read the prophet Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold the virgin shall conceive and very son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Which means God, God is with us. God with us. Okay. <laughs> and Luke, Luke, chapter one. 
verses 27 through 34. Luke 1, 27 through 34. Terry's got it. Come on, Jesus. Who? Terry. Speak it, Terry. Twenty-seven through thirty-four. Wait, hold on, I need to, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. <clears throat> and when he came to her and said, "Greetings, O favored one; the Lord is with you," but she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greetings this, greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? Okay. Read that scripture to the generation today. <laughs> okay. All right. Next one, Jesus died for the sins of the world. <laughs> Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 29. Next day, John said, Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. And, Gospel of John, chapter 3, verses 16 through 17. Can't you just quote it, Dave, without a Bible? 316, John 316. Oh, I, 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 I. For God so loved the world. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Now this next one, I've got it worded a little bit awkward. You may want to change it. That's okay. Jesus bore the sins of us. Our sins? Or our sins in his body on the cross. Jesus bore our sins or the or the sins of us in his body on the cross. Actually that should say on his body. So correct that, would you please? On his body. Okay? Oh, okay. Sin never entered into Jesus, so I needed to correct that. That's my bad. All right, First Peter. First Peter, two, chapter. First Peter, chapter two, verse twenty-four. Two twenty-four. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. Okay. In, on, kind of the, you know. What did he say? 
Yeah, mine says in. Yeah, mine says in too. In his body. Uh, okay, it, the, in the body is okay. It never entered his soul, so okay. we can go with body. So it's the okay. Flesh is, yeah. Yeah, the flesh. He born so, in his body is okay. On, you know, either way. Questions, comments? Somebody's just looking at me like, what? Like I'm speaking alien language here. Give me a Bible verse for that basketball. I'm sorry? Give me a Bible verse for that basketball. First Peter 2. 24. Yeah, First Peter 2, 24. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry about that. That's okay. Good, good. 2, 24. Uh, Brother Mike, did you get the Jesus died for the sins of the world? Did you get those? Okay. All right. Good. All right. Next one. Jesus is our atonement. We'll say friend. A T O N E M E N. T. Atonement. A T O N E M E N T. All right. Somebody read. Second Corinthians, Chapter Five. Second Corinthians. Chapter 5, verses 18 through 19. <laughs> All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ God was recon that is, in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Okay. <laughs> First, Timothy. Can I? Yes. Say something. Yes. In the King James Version, it's, it's almost written as a legal document. Because it says, to wit. To wit. That God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself. Yes. Not imputing their trespasses. <coughs> that, that's, that's the legal document there. We need to understand that. Very good. Okay, 1 Timothy 2, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 5 and 6. Somebody else read something here. I'm tired of that crew over there. <laughs> Who? Christy. You've got to give us a chance. There is one God and there is one mediator between God and men. The man Christ Jesus who gave himself as a ransom for all which is the testimony given at the proper time. Okay. One more. Colossians. Chapter 1, verses 21 through 22. I like this. It gets you familiar with the Bible. Judy has it. Who? Judy. You that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now have he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. Okay. King James. Now, I hope you can all see this, but you need to write this on your piece of paper. At one minute. At what? At 
one moment. At one moment. At one At one At one At one At one Mint, M E N T, at one mint. That's the what? Are you just telling us how to spell it? No. I can't see it. Yes. Take a colon. Okay, I got you. And make three words. At one mint. That's what Christ did for us. He brought us back into oneness with God. Can you hold that up so they can see? Because you, you held it up pretty high and they... There you go. Thanks. That's good. Did you say Jesus? Jesus. Mm -hmm. We're talking about Jesus. Our sins separated us from God. Jesus' death on the cross brought us back to at one moment with God. That's what atonement is. And as soon as you get a hold of that, you probably start shouting somewhere. Mm -hmm. Okay? Alright. Next one. And we're gonna we're gonna finish it with Jesus tonight. Jesus rose from the dead yes, amen. in the same body that he died in. And that's important. Yes. This wasn't some mystical thing. This wasn't, um, a, a, you know, a revitalized super thing that happened. That completely changed. No, um, and I, I like what this one preacher said. Kind of get off on a uh, tangent here, a little rabbit trail. The angel the angel did not roll that stone away for Jesus to get out. He was already out. He rolled that stone away so people could see in. Anyway, all right. Luke, all the way to chapter 24. Luke, chapter 24, verses 36 through 43. Luke 24, 36 through 43. You're so neat. I've got it. All right. And as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them, and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. But they were terrified and frightened, and supposed that they had seen a spirit. Okay, stop. Why did they think they're seeing a spirit? They knew he was dead. Yeah, because he's dead. Who is this? What is this? It's it's the it's a, the ghost of Christmas past. Okay, continue, Val. And he said unto them, Why are you troubled? And why do you thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that is that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones as you see me have. And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they yet believed not for joy, and wondered he, saith unto them, Have ye here any meat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish and of honeycomb. 43? 43. And he took it and did eat before them. <laughs> Come on, guys. <laughs> The, the risen Savior is just showing up and all you got is fish and honeycomb. Where's the 
But come on, man. But he ate. Yeah. But, but he ate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Uh, they probably weren't expecting him to show up that night. Okay? Yeah. All right. Next one. Jesus ascended. Ascended. A S C E N D E D. Into heaven. And is now seated at the right hand. Of the throne of God interceding. Okay. Okay. Better say that a little so, slower. Jesus, okay. after, after death, rose. Yes, after he rose from the dead, he, he ascended is. into heaven. So I'm going to read that a little bit slower. Jesus ascended into heaven and is now seated at the right hand of the throne interceding. So we're, we're going to go to Acts chapter 1, verses 9 and 11, through 11. Excuse me. Acts chapter 1, 9 through 11. Somebody? After he said this. He was taken up before their very eyes, and clothed clouds hid him from their sight. To work, twenty-one. Uh, trip two eleven. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, "Why do you stand here, looking into the sky?" This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him going to heaven. Oh, yeah. Woo! Hallelujah. That's a good one. What one was that one? That was Acts chapter 1, verses 9 through 11. Can you imagine seeing that? Wouldn't that be awesome? awesome. So, um, got a story to tell you. I don't know if it's true or not. It's kind of an urban legend. Okay, so this church started push, putting on a passion play and every year the passion play got more and more intricate, got more and more detailed, more and more people got involved. The budget got bigger and bigger and bigger. They kept pouring money into it and it became very elaborate. And this was going on for years. So one night they were putting on the play and one of the Roman soldiers drew his sword, which was a real sword, uh, as they were arresting Jesus and he tripped and the sword went flying and hit Jesus, the guy who was playing Jesus, right in the thigh. And of course, you know, time, time out as we carry Jesus <laughs> off the stage. And so they were saying, they closed the curtain, they, okay, we're done, you know, send everybody on this. And then, so this Older guy that was in the place said, look, I've been in this play every year. I know just about everybody's lines. I know the lines of Jesus. People are here. I'll play the play, the place of Jesus until we get this figured out. But let's not leave the people stranded here. They, okay, we'll give it a shot. So they did a costume change, went through, and this guy is nailing his lines. I mean, bing, 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 all the way through. And so then it came time for the ascension. They had the harness attached to them and everything. And they had it set up to where you just kind of give yourself a little bit of a push up. And the balancing weights takes them up. Here goes Jesus. Up, 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 because this guy weighed a little heavier than the former guy playing Jesus. And this guy was so quick, he said, and another thing while I'm here. So then they said, we're going to have to help this guy. So he did it again, and one of the guys tugged, and they sent him up with the pulley, and they heard, ow! 
and then two sandals came flittering around. So, anyhow. All right, so we're going to go to the book of Hebrews, chapter 7. Hebrews 7, verses 24 through 28. 24 through 28. Hebrews 7, 24 through 28. Got it. Okay. But this man, because he continues ever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. For such an high priest became us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice for his very first for his own sins and then for the people. For this he did once when he offered up himself. For the law maketh men high priests which have infirmity, but the word of the oath which was since the law maketh the son who is consecrated forevermore. Okay, so let's 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 tear this scripture. Uh, let's tear into it for a minute. Verse twenty-four. But this what man? Man. Remember that. We're going to come back to that. Can save them from the guttermost to the uttermost. For such a high priest as us. Okay, and in one of your previous ones, you had. 1 Timothy 2 5, for there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. This is how Christ can intercede for you because he is a he's in the flesh. He's fully God and still fully man. He's in the flesh, and he knows what you and I are going through. Because he's already been there and done that. Get a hold of that. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, last one for tonight. Jesus is coming back. Yes, he is. And this is found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And I'm just going to read it for you. How about that? For what? For verse 13. 13 through 18. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep or have passed away, that you don't sorrow even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain... Unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep or have already passed away. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And that word trump is shofar. Mm-hmm. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So, after Jesus ascended, Acts chapter 1, Acts chapter 2, the falling of the Holy Spirit, the church begins. Okay? The Uh, the book of Acts is the beginning of the church, the establishing of the church. Do you know what the greeting of the newfound churches was? Maranatha. Maranatha, The Lord cometh. Maranatha. How do you spell that? M-A-R-A-N-A-T-H-A. 
Maranatha, the Lord cometh. Makes sense. Yeah, sounds good. And that is our hope. Yeah. Even so, Lord, come quickly. But as the old song goes, wait a little longer, sweet Jesus. I got more sheep to get into the Amen. pasture. Yes, Amen. 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 All right. Now, go home and stare at the ceiling as you're in bed trying to figure all this out. And it's okay. Again, we're not diving into a theological seminary depth here. We're just scratching the surface, so we all know what we're talking about when we're talking about the fundamental tenets of Christianity. And remember one thing. These are the things that cannot be changed. If, if you hear somebody changing these things, they're off. They are way off. All right? Amen. 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 Father, we thank you for this time of gathering. Thank you for all that have come in. Thank you for those that are watching online. And we just pray that you bless us with the spirit of understanding. Bless us with the spirit of peace. And Father God, we thank you for it. We turn us back safely in Jesus' name. And we thank you for it. Amen. And all of God's people said, Amen. 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 So I have a question. Okay, everybody hold for a second. No, no. Hold for a second. All right, CR Friday night, and then Kip holding Sunday.